Urethral catheterization permits direct drainage of the urinary bladder and is often performed in pediatric practice. This video shows a diagnostic urethral catheterization in a girl. A catheter without a balloon is used. Urethral catheterization may be used for diagnostic purposes, such as collection of an uncontaminated urine specimen for culture and urinalysis, when it is essential to obtain a urine specimen from a young child who cannot void on command. Urethral catheterization for therapeutic indications is not the focus of this video. Urethral catheterization should not be performed in patients with suspected traumatic injury to the lower urinary tract. Some pelvic or straddle type injuries might be traumatic injuries. Perineal hematoma or blood at the meatus can indicate that such an injury might be present. Do not perform urinary catheterization in patients with known anatomical malformations of the lower urinary tract or recent urethral or bladder neck reconstruction. In all these cases, the patients would need referrals to a specialist. In addition, be certain that the patient has no history of latex allergy, since many gloves and catheters are made of latex. There are two types of urinary catheters, straight catheters and balloon or Foley catheters. This video shows the use of a straight catheter for diagnostic urethral catheterization. Straight catheters are soft single lumen catheters that are most often made of polyvinyl chloride or PVC. They are used in the collection of uncontaminated urine for diagnostic purposes and in patients with neurogenic bladder who need intermittent catheterization. The choice of catheter depends on the size of the urethra and generally on the age of the child. Appropriate sizes range from 4 to 6 French in newborns, 6 to 8 French in infants, 10 to 12 French in prepubertal girls, and up to 14 French in adolescents. The anatomy of the female infant or child is similar to that of the female adult, except for the obvious differences in size and lack of secondary sexual characteristics. The urethra is short and straight, and thus easy to catheterize. The female urethral meatus is found between the clitoris and the vagina. It can be difficult to locate, since the mucosa of the vaginal introitus may cover it. Labial adhesions can occasionally occur in young girls. This condition can complicate urethral visualization and sometimes can impede catheterization. Gather the necessary equipment. Many centers have prepackaged catheterization kits containing most of the required material. You will need sterile water or saline, soap, sterile gauze pads, towels, an absorbent underpad, and sterile and non-sterile gloves. You will also need sterile lubricant gel with or without 2% lidocaine, antiseptic solution containing chlorhexidine or povidone iodine, an appropriately sized urethral catheter, and a sterile urethral catheterization kit. The kit should contain at least one sterile fenestrated drape, swabs for cleansing, and a specimen collection cup. You will also need appropriate transport containers for urine to be sent for urinalysis or culture. Before you begin, describe the procedure and its benefits, risks, and complications to the parents or caregivers and to patients old enough to understand. Prepare every child for the procedure in a developmentally appropriate manner. Ask the parents or caregiver about any allergies to latex and about allergies to iodine if you are using povidone iodine. Also determine whether urethral catheterization has been performed or attempted previously. Place the patient in the supine frog leg position with knees flexed. Wearing non-sterile gloves, place the absorbent underpad beneath the patient's buttocks with the plastic side down. Ask an assistant to hold the legs firmly in this position. Use the gauze to wash the external genitalia with soap and water. Rinse with clean water and dry with a hand towel. Dispose of the non-sterile gloves. Wash and disinfect your hands. Place the sterile urethral catheterization kit on a tray and open it. Disinfect your hands and put on sterile gloves. Lubricate the distal end of the catheter with sterile gel. 
Prepare the entire genital area by cleansing three times from the center to the periphery using an antiseptic agent. Then place the sterile fenestrated drape over the patient so that the vulva is accessible through the opening. Remove your gloves and put on another pair of sterile gloves. With your thumb and the index finger of your non-dominant hand, separate the labia, which are considered to be non-sterile. With your dominant hand, use antiseptic soak sterile swabs or povidone iodine swab sticks to wash the urethral meatus three times in the anterior to posterior direction. At many pediatric centers, lubricant gel is placed on the catheter before the procedure is performed. At some centers, clinicians also use 2% lidocaine jelly placed above the vagina prior to the catheterization. Place the catheter in a sterile container within the sterile field between the patient's legs. While holding the labia with your non-dominant hand, locate the meatus. If the mucosal covering of the vagina makes this difficult, gently pull the cephalad fold of the vaginal introitus downward. Once you have located the urethra, hold the lubricated catheter with the fingers of your dominant hand. Then slowly and gently insert the tip of the catheter into the meatus. Slowly advance the catheter into the bladder. The other end of the catheter should remain in the container. You should not encounter any resistance. If you do encounter resistance, do not force the catheter, since this may cause trauma or even perforation. If the catheter slips into the vagina, leave it there as a landmark and make a second attempt to insert a catheter into the urethral meatus. After the catheter has entered the bladder, urine should drain through it into the container. When urine flow ceases, remove the catheter or both catheters if there is also one in the vagina and submit the urine for culture and urinalysis. If it is impossible to perform catheterization through the urethral meatus because of anatomical variation or severe labial adhesion and urine therefore must be obtained directly from the bladder, consider the use of a suprapubic tap with aspiration of urine from the bladder, provided that the bladder is full and that you have experience in performing the procedure. This procedure will not be demonstrated here. A suprapubic tap should not be attempted without previous instruction. If there is insufficient drainage of urine through the catheter, massage the suprapubic region with gentle pressure to increase urine flow. If there is no flow of urine, remove the catheter and dispose of it properly. Consider whether the procedure should be attempted with a catheter that is different in size or flexibility. Complications of urethral catheterization are rare. Some examples of immediate complications are gross or microscopic hematuria and the creation of false passage. Long-term complications such as urethral strictures may also occur. In addition, iatrogenic infection may occur if the procedure is performed in conditions that are not aseptic. In this video, we have explained the risks and benefits of catheterization of the urethra in girls and have demonstrated how to prepare the patient, locate the urethra, and insert the catheter.